welcome to the part 4 of lecture 1 in this section or in this part we are going to talk about the different model assumptions or underlying assumptions of multiple linear regression models so in the multiple linear regression models we are going to re represent it in matrix notation so given a vector of inputs x we predict output y via the multiple linear regression model y equal to x beta plus epsilon where y is the vector of n y1 to y n x is the feature matrix of n cross p and epsilon is the residual vector or error vector so i have n samples and p features and n labels or n output x n cross p also known as design matrix also known as feature matrix typically are considered as a deterministic and most of the time n is greater than p except there are some biomedical experiments where n could be less than p those cases we will can talk about uh, later in the, the course so what are my model assumptions so most of the model assumptions are actually elicited on the error part so error are assumed to be random variables that induces a, a certain assumptions like expected value of epsilon or expected value of error is zero variance of error is sigma square for all the residuals of all the errors and this assumptions is known as homoscedasticity or homogeneity assumptions and covariance of epsilon i and epsilon j is equal to expected value of epsilon i times epsilon j is zero this is independence this assumption is effectively the independence assumption and this uh, assumptions is coming from the you know assumption that random these errors are all random variables or you know or it is a cross-sectional data and the data is being drawn from a simple random sample with replacement design structure so if you have a data set which is being designed or which is being you know uh, prepared through a simple random sample with replacement kind of design structure then you can uh, assume that your each of these if the samples are independent of each other and that will result a covariance between epsilon and F times epsilon j to be zero um, this we can write in a matrix notation expected value of error vector is a null vector zero of order n all n, n elements of the vector is zero and covariance matrix of epsilon is sigma square i n is a i n is a identity matrix of order n so all the diagonal elements are sigma square and off diagonal elements are zero that is because of the each of the samples are independent of each other so we as we have these two major assumptions that expected value of epsilon is zero and covariance of epsilon is sigma square i n it induces a distribution on y such that we can say that expected value of y is equal to x beta expected value of x beta plus epsilon which can be written as x beta plus expected value of epsilon which is zero so it turns out to be expected x beta so expected value of y is equal to x beta and covariance of y is equal to covariance of x beta plus epsilon x beta can be treated as a uh, constant so that resulted the covariance of y to be sigma square i n so note that we have made any we have not made any distributional assumption yet on the epsilon or on the y we will introduce that assumption a little later what is the expected value of c times y if c is a constant 
So we know expected value of y is x beta, then expected value of c y is c times x beta. Now consider the ordinary least square estimator or OLS estimator of beta. Beta is beta hat equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y. Now expected value, this is an estimator, so what is the expected value of beta hat? Expected value of beta hat is x transpose x inverse x transpose y. We consider x to be a deterministic matrix, so x transpose x inverse is a p cross p and x transpose is a p cross n, so it gives me a sort of a p cross n um, kind of behavior. So it, it behaves as a constant. It's effectively behave as a constant. So I can take this out. So it gives me x transpose x inverse x transpose expected value of y. Now I can replace expected value of y by x beta this result. And this is basically identity resulting identity matrix. So it shows me that beta hat is an unbiased estimator of beta. So result 2 tells me OLS estimator beta hat is an unbiased estimator of beta. Suppose we are interested in some linear combination of regression coefficient like f beta is or c transpose beta. Then the unbiased estimator of c transpose beta is simply c transpose beta hat that is c transpose expected value of c transpose beta hat is c transpose beta. Now suppose c is equal to x naught is a test point. Then we are interested in the prediction f of x naught equal to x transpose beta are of this form. If we have any other linear estimator theta tilde equal to a transpose y is an unbiased estimator for c transpose beta that is expected value of a transpose y is c transpose beta then variance of c transpose beta hat is less than equal to variance of a transpose y so the pr this is a result which is known as gauche markov theorem the proof I am leaving as a homework problem. I am not going to prove this in the lecture. I never do that. I leave it as a homework for the students and you have to figure it out. But I am going to explain that what does it mean, what this theorem actually means. It means that basically OLS estimates of a parameter beta have the smallest variance among all the linear unbiased estimators of beta in that why sometimes it's called base linear unbiased estimator also now i will discuss a little bit about the gauche markov theorem consider the mean squared error of an estimated theta tilde in estimating theta so i want to estimate theta and theta tilde is an estimator so consider the mean squared error so expected value of the mean square error for the theta tilde will be expected value of theta tilde minus theta whole square. So I can, you know, we can write it as a variance of theta tilde plus expected value of theta tilde minus theta whole square, which is nothing but a bias. So variance plus bias square. The Gauche mark of theorem implies that the least square estimator has the smallest mean square error of all linear estimator with no bias. However, there may well exist a biased estimator with a smaller mean square error. For example, ridge estimator or Jamestown shrinkage estimator of beta create a little bias for the reduction of variance and its MAC are lower than OLS estimator. So we can show that Ridge estimator or Jamestown estimator has less mean square error than OLS estimator. Though Ridge estimator or Jamestown estimator are not unbiased estimator, but so 
OLS estimator is best among the class of linear unbiased estimator. It's a very rigid class. It's a very only few estimators are there. But if you break, if you consider that okay, I don't care. I am ready to accept a little bit of bias. That is fine with me. But if you ready to accept that, then the ridge estimator or Gemstein estimator of beta can give you even better estimator in a sense that it ha will have a lower mean square error the, than the OLS estimator. Why we want to use mean square error? Mean square error is directly related to prediction accuracy. Now consider the prediction of the new response at x0. So y0 is f of x0 plus some epsilon naught. The expected prediction error of an estimate will be f hat of x0 is x0 transpose beta hat. So you can write it the, the mean square error of the prediction as expected value of y0 the actual value minus your predicted value which is f hat of x naught square you can write it as a sigma square plus expected value of x naught transpose beta hat minus f of x naught square so which is basically sigma square plus mean square error of x naught transpose beta hat so expected prediction error and mean square error differ only by the constant sigma square that is why mean square error directly related to the relate to the prediction accuracy and that is why mean square error or sometimes root mean square error are so popular in the next part of the or the last part of the lecture one we will discuss some examples please continue watching the videos